this is Junichiro Horikawa, and today I would like to show you some quick tips for Grasshopper to, in order to create a point cloud like this, wrapping around a sphere uh, using an angle uh, between two points as a parameter to create this kind of a, to control the density of this point cloud like this. And I mean, we're gonna do this mathematically. Uh, just by using grasshopper components so it's gonna be a pretty easy one to follow I think so first of all I'm going to start with uh, making an arc like this uh, on a XY plane uh, using these um, the angle as a parameter between two points so let's say you want to create a point uh, that has a angle between 10 degrees and in order to make an arc the arc is made of pi meaning um, <clears throat> meaning you have 180 degrees and that's equal to pi so I'm gonna use this one and I'm going to convert this degree value 10 to radius as well right and then I'm going to make I'm going to divide this uh, divide these two numbers so that I could know how many values that I need you know how many values how many steps that I need uh, using this one in order to reach 180 degrees so I'm gonna use divisions divide pi by this value right here now I am going to use a range to create a step with this numbers and I'm going to create a range between 0 to pi in order to create a arc with the points. So currently I have an angle between 0 to pi with the number I specified right here. Okay, so the value between uh, index 0 and index 1 should be around 10 degrees. Alright, so now I have uh, values, uh, angle values, I could use cosine and sine in order to create an arc value. Instead of using any like transformation component or so, we're gonna do this mathematically. All right, so let's com connect those, uh, connect this uh, degree value or angle value to cosine and sine component. Then we're going to create a point using construct point okay we might also need to set some radius for the sphere so let's have some value for the radius say 100 for temporary okay and I'm gonna multiply this radius by a sine and sine independently like this and since we want to make an arc on the x y plane, we're gonna just put this cosine and cosine to the x value and the sine to the y value. Now I be able to now I am able to create an arc with a angle between those two points are something similar to something uh, close to 10 degrees. And if I make this value smaller, then the steps become smaller as well, then the number of points will increase as well. Okay, so, so far so good. So next thing I want to do is to rotate this whole uh, list of points using a uh, YZ plane, right? But if I use the same like step number right here that I created, then you have too much density on the end of the arc as you can see the steps between two points become smaller than uh, this value so we are going to sample the largest uh, angle uh, largest radius of this arc uh, looking from looking at the y uh, axis right here so the center point should be should have the most um, biggest radius and the end of the arc should have the most smallest radius 
Now, so depending on the radius, we want to change the number of points that we're going to copy through the through the rotation. So we're going to rotate like this, but how many uh, numbers we want to rotate depends on the radius. So, and the maximum number should be equal to this number if you're going to just rotate half um, half degrees, I mean that 180 degrees. So if you want to rotate like 360 degrees, then the number of points should be uh, double size of this number right here that I have created right here. So <clears throat> um, first of all, uh, in order to get the the correct number, how many numbers we want for each points rotating in uh, YZ plane, we are going to first calculate the 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 circle uh, lengths uh, for each points by calculating uh, by using the diameter of the circle plus multiplying with a pi. So that will be the equations for calculating the lengths of circles. So we have pi and the radius is currently the radius is calculated in y axis. So this value, the sine y, uh, sine multiplied by the radius, the maximum radius is the actual radius for each point. So we can use this. We can multiply this by two to get the diameter value. All right, like this, and then multiply by pi gives you a value the length of circle. Now after you have got the length of for the circle, you can divide this uh, length by uh, step value and the distance between those two numbers. And currently the the step uh, the distance between those two values can be retrieved from a if you go to this point you can maybe get like two points out of this uh, list like the first point and the second point then calculate the distance between those two points will give you the distance between those two points so we can use that to divide with this uh, circle length to actually get the numbers of points you want to copy on the x uh, z y plane so uh, shall we do that Okay, is there any other way we could calculate the distance between those two points? Well, we could also use um, this angle value. But currently it's being normalized by using this, so I mean, yeah, let's just make it simple. Or yeah, I'm going I'm going to just pick up two points out of this point list by inputting sublist maybe I'll just get the first two points by inputting one as a parameter to the D then you'll get the first two points like this so to get the distance between do those two points uh, I will just make a polyline between those two points and just get the length of that curve will give you the exact exact value that I want, right? So now I have I can divide the circle lengths uh, division. I can divide the circle divisions with a distance between two points. Then the value that I get right here should be the number uh, of points that could be used. Uh, for the circle, for each circle created by each point on an arc. So that is equivalent to the number of points that I can rotate. I will use the rotate component and rotate using yz axis. This and since the maximum number, maximum value of the 
rotation should be 360 degrees we can make another range and also create a round maybe and use either either value right here but maybe I'll just use the ceiling value to n then to the d that will be equal to uh, 2 pi so because I want to rotate 360 degrees so I'm gonna input I'm just gonna input 2 pi right here like this and then so this will be the rotation value Let's simplify this okay and the point that I want to rotate is this one I think yeah so let's graph this to make the structure between those two values be the same all right like this and then connect this to this one now the point has been successfully created now i think this file by by using range i think you also you have a duplicated points because you have zero degrees and 300 60 degrees uh, and the first point and the end point so I think we have to call call one of the point one of the index so I'm just going to in call the first index so that I can uh, exclude the zero degrees value and still the same because the one of the point was duplicated all right so this should be fine this looks fine now I'm going to finalize this by uh, coloring each point uh, using the normalized color, uh, normalized value, the normal vector value. So I could do that by going into uh, the point position. No, not this one. The final point position. Then convert this into vector first. Then I'm going to unitize this using unit vector. Then now I have unitized this, the value should be in between uh, minus 1 to 1 for x, y, and z. So next thing I would like to do is to add a vector called 1, 1, 1 so that the old value will be positive. Since I want to use the, the x, y, and z value for color RGB. I have to make all the values to be positive so I'm going to add a 1 1 1 vector so now the vector range has become um, 0 to 2 so finally I can multiply this by 0.5 then the range will be in between 0 to 5 uh, 0 to point um, I mean 0 to 1 like this okay now I can split or deconstruct vector to get the X Y and Z value then convert this into a color value using RGB connecting RGB and preview the point each point based on the normal direction preview point and voila that's it so that's how you can uh, create uh, evenly not exactly even but even mm, close to evenly um, separated points using a separating angle value as a parameter like this and looks pretty nice okay so that's it and that was the quick tips how you can create a point clouds on a sphere using an angle as a parameter. Okay, so that's it. Thank you.